Hey there fellow marketers, Professor Walters here, and today we're here in Budapest, Hungary, and today what we're going to talk about is actually how you analyze transportation and infrastructure in a different country to see if it's going to be a good place for your business to work. Because no matter where we're going to go in the world, we've got to analyze things. We might look at the economic side of things, the cultural side of things, the legal sides of things, but of course you got to look at transportation, you got to look at infrastructure, you got to look at communication, right? And so that's what this video is going to focus on. It's going to focus on how do we analyze the infrastructure and transportation networks of countries we might want to go work in, okay? Now, the first thing I want to talk about is actually the transportation network. I mean, think about it. The roads, the railways, the airports, the ports, the train lines, stuff like that. What do they have? How will I be able to get my product from in the country to other parts of the country? Because that will have a really big effect. I mean, think about it. If you're in the US, you have this huge country. How do we get it across? Well, there are rail lines we could use. We could fly stuff across the country like a FedEx thing. We could put it on trucks that go on the highway. We have all these things. But imagine if you're going to a country where maybe they don't have highways. Maybe it's more the back roads, windy roads kind of things, or dirt road kind of things. Well, that's going to influence the kind of transportation you use. Because in the US, I can have a big, huge truck going down the road. That big semi pulls into Walmart, no problem. But if I'm here in Budapest, you can't drive the uh, big semis through here and deliver stuff. You got to have smaller trucks. So I have smaller trucks to transport on those smaller roads. That means, okay, I have to make more trips. I have to have more people. I'm going to have to have, uh, you know, more of a logistics network is going to be more important to me. So you have things like that. And also, if you're going to have your workers, I mean, think about it. That tram going by right there, <laughs> it's a cool tram. And the thing is, how do my workers get to work? Is it going to be easy for them? And well, they can take the public transport there. That's going to be great. I don't have to give them a special, you know, parking budget. I can just give them a monthly pass on the on the tram. And you have to think about these things cuz also with transportations and transport transporting your goods, you got to think about is how will my goods get there cuz sometimes you can't use a truck. Sometimes there are no railroads and you might need to build your own transportation network. So this could be you build your own pipeline to get the oil from the center of the country to the port. Or like if you're in Sao Paulo, you build a pipeline that pumps orange juice concentrate from the interior of the Sao Paulo state to the Port of Santos so you can get it out there because the roads in Brazil are crazy and you'd sit in a traffic jam forever. So you got to think about that, okay? So that's one thing. But it's not just the roads you have to think about. You also have to think about your distribution network you're going to have in that country. So think about it. If you want to be in a lot of grocery stores in the US, hey, I just got to get with Walmart and I'll be almost everywhere. It's great. Well, the thing is, in some countries, you don't have one big player that goes everywhere. You might have a ton of little stores you have to go to, and how will that affect your distribution? Man, now I gotta go see so many people versus one delivery, I've got 10 kind of stuff. Because we have to figure out is what, what's one of our key things, and if one of your kind of key success factors, one of your core capabilities is distribution, you gotta figure out is, hey, how can I distribute my products the best way possible? I remember it was my 22nd birthday, I mean, so it's been a few years ago, and I was hiking the Inca Trail in Peru. I gave this highest peak there, and I'm like, oh, I oh, sucks. It's so high up here. I can't breathe anymore, but it's so beautiful. And there's an old lady there with a bucket of water. And in the water, there's bottles of Coca-Cola. I'm like, oh my God, that is distribution. Like, how did Coke get a lady that would have, the, have you know, Cokes there at the top of a mountain? That's insane. And so you have to think about that. How am I going to get that distribution going? How am I going to set up that network? These are really important things you have to think about. And then you gotta think about your communications network, okay? I mean, I know now we're like, well, everywhere I go, I have my Wi-Fi. Well, no, not everywhere you go, you have Wi-Fi. Not everywhere you go, you get 5G or 4G or whatever, LTE connection. You have to look at these things. Do they have the systems we can do? I mean, if they've got Google, you know, Google, you know, stuff there that makes it super fast internet, great. But what if it's still dial-up? What if they don't have smartphones? What if it's still the old flip phones? And so, for example, a bank. Think about it. with your bank, they do different things for you, right? And they're communicating with you in different ways. Maybe they'll have their, their website that you can go online on your computer for, or you can use your smartphone and use that 5G or 4G technology to, you know, fastly check your bank and, and make trades and all kinds of stuff. But then other times, maybe you just send them a, a text message, balance, send B-A-L to this number and we'll send you your bank balance. Well, those are three different ways that they're communicating with you. And some of those, some places in the world don't have all of those. Just think about it. If you don't have the, the high speed data or people don't use smartphones, well, then most likely we're going to use the text messaging banking. Our, our, our having a cool smartphone app is probably not going to help if nobody has a smartphone. So we have to think about that in the communication style. Because I know a lot of people think Wi-Fi is a God-given right and I should have it everywhere. 
Well, businesses know it's not a God-given right, and a lot of places you can't get it, so you gotta be careful with that. And another infrastructure thing I wanna talk about, and there's more, but I just wanna finish off with this one, is we have to look at is how does business work, okay? Like, how do you pay? I mean, do you pay like in Brazil, where you can pay in 12 installments, or is it you pay after 30 days or 90 days, or is it cash only, or can I pay with credit card? I mean, I'm here in Budapest, and some places they'll say, look, we'll take euros, we'll take forints, we'll take credit cards, whatever you want. Other places, like, no, cash only, and only forints, the local currency here. And that'll affect where you go, because think about it. If, I, if there's no ATM around for me to get cash, well, then I can only go to a restaurant that takes credit card, right? And so that's going to limit what I can do. And so for companies, they need to know is, how do people usually pay here? What's something here? Are they using Apple Pay all the time? Then I need to have that. If nobody's using Apple Pay, then maybe I just do cash only. And so you have to think about those things and the ramifications for it. Because all of a sudden we're doing all cash stuff. Well then what about safety, security of the money and things like that? Then there's all kinds of other stuff you have to think about. Also, you can think about some of the like more seedier sides of things. Like what if it was a country where bribing is quite common? If it is, uh-oh, we could get in trouble for that. But what do we do if we don't? And that's why it's really important for companies when they're evaluating new markets to go into, it's not just looking that we're gonna make money there, and it's not just looking to see if like the people will work out, it's looking at the basic infrastructure of the company with transportation and money and stuff like that to see if we can actually work there. So I hope this helps you know a little bit more about what you need to do to evaluate a market to go into. If you wanna learn more, we've got videos on the social side of things, we've got videos on the economic side of things, we got videos on the legal side of things, and do check those out here on our channel. If you do like marketing videos like this, do hit that subscribe button and you'll get all our new marketing videos popping up all over. Well, if you hit the bell, you subscribe is nice, but hit the bell, then you definitely will get all of our videos. And a big thank you to all of you that have watched. I really appreciate it. If you want to give us a thumbs up, we appreciate that too. And we'll say bye from Budapest.